how would you do future projects with, I guess, the absence of Kojima possibly not being with the uh, I, yeah, I've got the same question in my head that you do. I'm like, what's going to happen next? Is he going to go out and develop something, you know, on his own? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like, uh, independent Japanese developers that are doing that lately, so maybe he might make something of a spiritual successor. I, yeah, I'd like to see something happen. I mean, we were led to believe a couple of years ago that by 2015 there was going to be a sequel. Uh, we, I was led to believe we were going to be recording in 2014. Yeah, and it was supposed to be out this year. And that has not happened. And then he gets unceremoniously dumped. So I'm like, oh no, what do we do? So something's got to happen because it was such a success, Revengeance. You know, so much. to see that character die, right? Yeah, I mean, he's still living. So just somebody has to kind of take the mantle up as long as there's not a conflict of interest between Konami and Kojima. So that's all in the paperwork. I'm sure they'll sort it out. But when you know, let me know. <laughs> totally. Yes. Um, more of a technical question. Um, is there a difference between voicing for like anime versus video games, like Kingdom Hearts versus Naruto? When it, well, when it comes to Kingdom Hearts, because we are dubbing it, mm -hmm. uh, much like anime, it's similar. For anime, we've got uh, a monitor up in front of us, a screen, if you will, and we've got headphones on. I've got a, a sheet music stand in front of me with the copy. And um, the director on the other side of the glass with the engineer will tell me, okay, go to line number 63. Uh, Iruka is talking to Naruto. <clears throat> and, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's chiding him because he's been acting out in class. And so what I'll hear in my headphones is a series of three beeps. And then on the fourth imaginary beep <clears throat> is when I start the line of dialogue. And so I have to get the point of view or the attitude of the acting and the timing of the line to flit, to flit, to fit <laughs> within the lip flaps of the character on the screen in front of me. So, you know, it, it's, it's quite technical, but you get used to it after a while, but it would be like, you know, <coughs> Naruto, stop acting out. I can't believe you've done that. And then you look to the glass. How was that? We're good for time, let's try that again. Okay, bring it down a little bit, drop the uh, energy just a bit. You're angry with them, but you're not that angry. Ready, Quentin, go. Do, do, do. Naruto, stop doing that. I can't believe you're acting out like that. Much better, okay, we're moving on. <laughs> on to line 84. Okay, turning the page. And that's how that works. Now with Kingdom Hearts, uh, a little bit different. Um, we don't have line pages, but they'll have all the dialogue <coughs> listed and the director will be saying the same thing. We're gonna go in at this point. Same beeps, same kind of thing in terms of acting, same rhythm, so if any of you are into music or looking forward to this kind of a career, know that they kind of go hand in hand. God bless you. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you. And, uh, so that's how that goes. Also, some of it, they are recording my face, so they'll have a video camera on me for the video games for Kingdom Hearts, because they'll try to then uh, manipulate the models and make them work as well as possible in addition to us timing it. Okay, so it's you know? not like straight dubbing like with the narrative. It and is, but it isn't. I mean, we will be doing the dubbing, but they have the additional benefit of technology in that they are then going to try to manipulate the lip flaps even more so to really nail it in the CGI of the video game. <laughs> Whereas uh, something like um, the Metal Gear series, or Guild Wars that I've done, or where I played Spider-Man in Marvel's Ultimate Alliance, or Venom in Friend or Foe. I got to just act, and then they animated to me. Okay. There you go. Thank you. And I relearn it as I tell it. You, young man! Do you get, like, props to get into character when you do voice acting? Do you get, like, props? Like, uh, let's say you're doing a character with a sword, and so do you get, like, a physical sword? A physical sword? Yeah. No! I don't, but I'm willing. Um, no, we just have to use our imaginations. It's just like when we were all kids, you know. Whatever it was you played as kids, again, aside from video games, you know, whether you're playing around the house when you're very young, or you're playing outside, I mean, you know, in the old days, it would be, whether it's, you know, we're going to play Star Wars, or we're going to play Cops and Robbers, or you're going to play Doctor, Nurse. I never got to do that, but I've heard some people do. Um, you know, you just like leap into it. You're like, oh, you're the good guy. You're the bad guy, and I'm in jail. Someone's got to save me. Go! Right? So you didn't go, hold on a minute. Um, do I have a gun? <laughs> because
because for me to get into the scene to save someone, I need a gun. Oh, and I'm the villain. Do I have a, a rope or a blade? How, how angry am I? Have I been to jail? Yeah, so, so no, to answer your question, we don't get props. The props are our imagination and what we see on the page. And they may say, you know, in this scene, yes, you have a sword and you're going to gut someone. So on this, we want you to give me three short thrusts. So I would go. I would act out physically, like the mic might be stationed here, and I might go. <coughs> so okay, give me three medium. <coughs> and three long ones. <coughs> okay, we can hear the button on your jacket. <laughs> your little tag moving. So take that off and do it again. Oh! <laughs> and that actually happens, because I just heard it while it was jingling, and I went, that's what somebody in the booth would say. But yeah, no, we don't get props. The only time we have props are when we're on a stage, you know, and then we're doing a play. How about from a lady? Yes. Will you sing the Alley song? I will. I will. I will. I think it's, it's okay because it's not. A, there's, I don't think there's anything. There's nothing. No, there's nothing dirty in it at all. It's just innuendo, and you have to understand the words to uh, get it. Because we, it's a song. I'll tell the story first. I have to tell the song. Let's switch it, reverse it. You understood what I just said. I feel like Willy Wonka. Anyway, um, Jeff Nimoy and I, uh, who is another actor and a director, we went on our first tour of the convention circuit maybe nine years ago or something, ten. And we went to a convention. And afterwards, Jeff said, hey, Quint, let's go to the bar, you know, let's, let's meet some gals, you know? You go, okay, cool. So we went down, and, and there was no bar in the hotel lobby. So we went over to this young fellow sitting behind the table, as you do, and say, hey man, um, where, where can we meet some ladies? He goes, uh, in the alley room. <laughs> and we go, is it behind the doors there? Is there like a club or something? He goes, yowie, yowie, yowie room. We go, what's yowie? He said, oh, you'll find out. <laughs> We're like, oh, this guy's cool, right? He's hooking us up. So we walk in the doors, you know, and, uh, it's dark, it's really dark, but we see this, this is loads of women sitting in chairs and we see them walking and watching a big screen. And we look up and we see there's animated uh, young uh, adult men uh, on top of uh, another young naked adult man. And we went, yowee. Yowee! <laughs> uh, this was not what we were looking for. And as Jeff and I are talking, we're saying, you know, really, this doesn't, the lights go on. And all of a sudden, there's a guy at the front of the room who recognized us from the convention. And he's standing there in front of everybody, and he says, Ladies and gentlemen, because there was one, <laughs> we have got two special guests for you, Quentin Flynn and Jeff Nimoy. Come on in, guys. Okay. Jeff and I are like, no! <laughs> we're not here for that. We're not even here. <laughs> and they're applauding. Like, we don't want to disappoint anyone. We come in like, what's up? We're here. We just wanted to say... What's up? Uh, <laughs> I mean, she, we wanted to meet some lady, and, and he told us outside, but we didn't know what Yowie was, so we came in here, and they're like, uh -huh. <laughs> No, seriously, so uh, we'll see outside, we'll see outside. And then big applause, and we go outside, and we're standing there going, this is so awkward, really uncomfortable. But certainly they're not going to think we're into that. I mean, two guys standing together alone and single. Oh, <laughs> it's getting worse. The ladies are coming out. We're like, hi, would you like to? Ha no, okay. Hi, would you like to? And like, <laughs> no, no, but we're not. Sir, no, we're sick. No, but we're hetero. We're not gay. <laughs> so, that is the intro. Jeff and I decided we were going to write a song because, you know, in co American culture, we don't know. We, 